What's up everyone? Welcome to Sabrina Talks. I'm Sabrina if you're new. If you're not, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me. Happy Black History Month guys. Yes, it is that time of the month. Not that time, but like our time as black people to celebrate ourselves, celebrate our history, and just be happy that we are black. Because you know, things can get rough for us black people, but you know, this month, these 28 days of February, we are just going to take the time to just bask in our glory. So on my channel for Black History Month, I wanted to do all of my videos related to black people and black icons. So on today's video, we are going to shine a little spotlight onto Miss Issa Rae. I'm going to talk about Issa's career and her accomplishment, but I really want to focus on like her impact. So let's kick it right on off. Issa was born Joisa Rae Diop. She is an actor, writer, director, producer. She kind of does it all. Um, she was born in Los Angeles and then kind of moved to Maryland for a little bit, lived in Senegal for a little bit, and then really settled in Los Angeles again. Issa graduated from Stanford University and majored in African and African American studies, which I think is so cool. One, because Hello Stanford is a top-notch school, and two, because I just naturally thought since she is a writer, director, producer, all of the above, she would usually either go in like English or like drama or film but for her to study African and African American studies I just think is really impressive. After she graduated from Stanford she then uh, had a fellowship in New York and then I believe this is the time she started uh, taking some classes at the New York Film Academy. She created her first web series which was called Dorm Diaries and it was just kind of uh, showcasing her life as a black woman in Stanford because Stanford at the time and probably still nowadays is very much a white institute and you know there wasn't much black people there so she just kind of documented her life and that kind of gained some traction at least within the campus she was also just kind of putting random bits of you know entertainment online i believe she was doing like some freestyles and just some like little fun videos that she would put onto the internet then in february of 2011 she released her next big web series which was called The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl. This is the web series that really got her to where she is now. This web series was released on YouTube and had uh, two seasons I believe. After about seven episodes I believe she was saying that she didn't really have any more money to fund the web series but it was so popular that she was able to start a Kickstarter and raise a bunch of money to continue the web series. Now her raising all of this money led her to having HBO call her and you know try to set up a show which then became Insecure. She also wrote a memoir called The Mrs. Adventures of Awkward Black Girl that back in like 2015 that was a New York Times bestseller and just also was like talking about some of the things she talked about in her web series. But like I mentioned, since The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl got so much recognition and praise, it led her to having her show now on HBO which is called Insecure. Currently there's about four seasons and the fifth season is uh, coming up soon and will be the final season of the show. Besides writing and directing and starring in Insecure, Issa was also in the movies Little, she was in The Photograph and she she was in the movie Lovebirds which is on Netflix. Along with being the executive producer on some of the things like Little and The Photograph, she's also the executive producer for A Black Lady Sketch Show which is hilarious. I mean if you haven't seen A Black Lady Sketch Show I'm gonna need you to do that immediately because it's all just fantastic. A Black Lady Sketch Show aside, not only is she being an executive producer and writer and director and all of the things that she does, she has now also started a production company called Hooray Productions and it features separate entities within Hooray Productions. Color Creative is one of the entities that is underneath the like Hooray Productions umbrella. This is mainly focused on people of color who are writers and getting them kind of opportunities and managing them in a way. She also has radio, which I think is a very great name. This is mainly focused on like uh, music supervision and getting artists and uh, companies and you know, film studios music to play in their shows and such, which I think is so smart for her to also have. Like having, you know, a place where people of color and writers can have, you know, access to opportunity is one thing, but like to also have a music supervision department, I think it's just, wonderful you know i love me some music so i'm so happy that she's so passionate about it to create a whole music supervision 
side of her production company. Radio is also technically like a music label because they do have one artist named Timar and they have a partnership with Atlantic Records so if they did want to sign somebody they really could which I think is cool as well. This has been killing the game so she's obviously have gotten some award recognition so she's gotten two Golden Globe nominations for Best Television Actress in a Musical Slash Comedy. She was also nominated for four Emmy Awards. A couple were for Outstanding Lead Actress. A couple were for uh, Outstanding Lead Comedy Series which is obviously for Insecure. And then she was also nominated for Outstanding Variety Sh Sketch Show which was for a Black Lady Sketch Show because she is one of the creators on there. I believe she also has a bunch of other like awards and nominations but I can't remember them all. Lisa was featured on Time's 100 Most Influential Person and she had her little paragraph written by Mindy Kaling which is amazing. She was also I believe on Forbes like 30 under 30 and 40 under 40 list so I mean she's been getting recognition for quite some years now. With her career and all of her accolades aside I really want to get into her image impact and what she's doing for the black community. So we all know Insecure. Insecure is a fantastic show. It's really realistic and it's just, you know, really tells the life of like a average 20 something year old black woman, right? So that in itself is great. One of the things I really love about Issa is the fact that she has been using some of the same people who were in the misadventures of Awkward Black Girl in insecure in all of the things that she does which is just fantastic. Issa is very much of a person who loves trying to come up and get jobs for her friends. I've heard her say that many of times and I admire that so much about her because not only is she like well I want to make my things and I want them to be great and whatever she was like no I'm gonna make my things and if I'm getting the opportunity to make my things I'm gonna have my friends also who are in this industry come up and make it with me so we can all get opportunities and experience and blah blah blah. I just think that's so admirable especially with her production company that is solely focused on getting people of color and other minorities the chance and the opportunity to get some experience under their belt, get some, you know, jobs and stuff. And that is just so great because we all know Hollywood is so white. Like we might have the few inklings of people here and there but like not only is the acting jobs scarce for black people and people of color the production side of it like the the camera crew and the stage crew and the costume designers all of those are also scarce for black people and for her to be like no you know what when I make it big we all making it big because I'm getting you the opportunity I'm getting you the chance to do it and it's just these are the kind of people we should be thinking about and shining the light on every day because they're really here for the people. Like you can really tell she's for the people because she had that like viral moment that people still quote to this day when she was at that award show. I forgot what award show it was but she was like I'm rooting for everybody black. I'm rooting for um everybody black. <laughs> I am. I mean that's a full mood like that's how you know she's really here for all black people and all people of color because she's really like now I'm rooting for everybody who looks like me. Issa just being herself and getting the recognition that she is doing is providing one representation for a different kind of black woman that is usually portrayed on TV and stuff. You know her whole thing is she's the awkward black girl. She does awkward things. She gets into so awkward situations. That's great because not all black women are extremely confident and can you know finesse and sass their way out of every situation. There are some awkward black girls and like even if you don't fully relate to Issa and her awkwardness there's always like somebody else in the shows that you can relate to or could be like you know what I would do that same thing and I think that's just so wonderful. I also think she's representing for black women who are comedians because I don't think Issa really identifies as a comedian but my girl is funny so <laughs> she plays a lot of comedic roles and a lot of her things are based in comedy so I consider her to be kind of a comedian even if she doesn't do like stand-up and such. Her just you know being funny allows for people to be like oh well you know black people can be funny black women especially can be funny. She didn't open the door because Issa is not you know obviously the first funny black woman but she opens the door a little bit wider for everybody else behind her. I kind of believe that if Insecure didn't come out and Issa Rae didn't kind of get her big recognition that she is getting now and as well as some other things 
I believe a black lady sketch show probably wouldn't have been able to get made. It probably wouldn't have been, you know, as successful as it currently is. Because, you know, a black lady sketch show is created by Robin Thede, who is an also funny woman. But what that show does is allow for other funny black women and just other black actresses to be in this sketch comedy show and to you know get some more roles and get some more opportunities i mean like laverne cox was in there kelly Rowland was in there angela bassett was in there so many other people were featured in that show and it just gave all of them so much praise and recognition and opportunities and i fully believe that it's not solely but in part to Issa ray's success also robin Thede's success obviously because she's also been at the game for a while. I think with more representation of black women being funny and black women just kind of being normal and just doing miscellaneous things on TV and film, that was allowing for people to go, you know what, I can, I can actually watch a sketch show that's just mainly black women acting a fool. Another thing I love about Issa is that she's very adamant about the music that's in her projects, which I admire so much because once again, I am a music girl. So I believe in like a genius interview, she mentioned how much she, you know, considers music because she thinks music can make or break a project which she's absolutely correct she's also said that she likes to focus on smaller artists or independent artists or artists who are from the la area artists who are women like she really likes to focus on them so they can get some opportunity they can get some money like all of that she's really about helping out people of color and making sure we can get the opportunities because she knows how the industry is. And especially since she likes to feature these kind of people on her projects and mainly Insecure because that was the main thing she was doing for a while. With all the people who watch Insecure, if you get like an indie artist who or like an up and coming artist song on the show, now it's added to the soundtrack. Now people are hearing it during the show and going, wow, that's a great song. So they can get so much more recognition and streams and plays and downloads and all of that. It's great that she focuses so much on that and she doesn't let her music supervisor just kind of deal with it and she has no input. She really cares about it and works with the music supervisor and goes, hey, maybe we should do this or hey, um, I don't think I actually like that. Let's do that. Like she really puts it into the forefront of her mind. I'm just so happy that she's able to do all of these things because there's a lot of people who will say, oh yeah, you know, I give back to the community, but they'll just like donate some money to like a school or something. But Issa's like actively trying to change the industry and actively trying to get some jobs for her friends and actively trying to look out for people of color who want to be in this industry, knowing full and well how this industry works and what it does to people of color creators. So that's like the main reason I want to put a spotlight on Issa because I just really think she's going to do so much good things in this industry. As much as she's already done so much good uh, like in her career so far, I believe she's fully going to make a good amount of changes for the industry in the future so i'm excited to see that i know she has a bunch of like upcoming projects i know she's supposed to star in a couple of movies i think she's working with jordan peele on something which i'm excited to see what that is and i know she's doing like a docuseries maybe for netflix i could be wrong about that but i know she's working on a whole bunch of things so i know i'm excited to see what she puts out in the world in the future i hope you are too if you enjoyed this video please give it a like let me know if you have any favorite Issa Rae projects or if you have any favorite things about Issa Rae, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel for more Black History Month content and just, you know, content in general. Once again, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you guys have a great Black History Month. As always, please remember to be safe, be smart, be kind, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye guys.